Over 200,000 jobs have been added, which points to a healthy economy, but also a sign for interest rates to stay high. That's according to the Labor Department. They say although December saw a decent amount in job growth, it still was the lowest monthly increase in two years. Now, economists project the unemployment rate to reach 4.6 percent by the end of this new year. The Federal Reserve is concerned about the fast pace of wage growth, which it sees as a reason why inflation is likely to remain high. A warning as we approach Dating Sunday, what has been called the biggest dating day of the year. According to law enforcement, reports of romance scams are on the rise, costing Americans nearly $1 billion last year alone. ABC's Whit Johnson has the details on what's being done to take scammers down. When Rose Martin met Diego Francisco on an online dating site, she thought she had found her match. He sent me a picture of him in a muscle t-shirt. and He was showing me this dessert he made, but I didn't pick up on anything out of the ordinary. Authorities say behind the facade of her Italian suitor were actually six suspects indicted in federal court in 2021, accused of running a three and a half million dollar romance scam. These people are predators and they're conducting emotional and financial warfare. It's a reboot of an age old scam, says the IRS, tricking new victims today. The story that they used often was the scammer was purporting to be on an oil rig. He sent me a video of him doing the job under the water. Then all of a sudden this was going wrong and that was going wrong. And he would ask me to send money to get the machine fixed. Over the course of several months, Rose telling us she sent the man she thought was Diego more than $175,000. The scammers so convincing, Rose said they would send links to fake websites showing bank accounts flush with funds to reassure her that she would get her money back, even video chatting with her. That's what they're doing now. Something as low tech as taking someone's video off of social media and just dubbing your own voice over it. Investigators telling ABC News the six suspects behind Diego are Nigerian. One defendant, Oluwatomiwa Akintola, pleading guilty this October, sentenced to over four years in federal prison. According to the indictment, Akintola's shell company received over $700,000 from multiple victims, including money from Rose. In this case, the money went to luxury items for themselves. They put money back into their business to send out documents that appear legitimate, that are fake. Documents like the photo of this passport claiming to belong to Diego. ABC News used reverse imaging on the photos of Diego sent by the alleged scammers and learned that they are instead pictures of T.R. Pescott, who works as a model. The images matching those posted to Pescott's confirmed Instagram account. We arranged for Rose to meet TR virtually. It's so very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. As you can tell, my voice is not the same, I guess, from the person. No, you. it's not. It's totally different. It's been crazy, I have to say, over the past four or five years. Almost every week, I receive up to a dozen messages more from women around the world saying that, I've scammed them, but then also showing me different profiles of other aliases using my photos. The U.S. Secret Service, who jointly investigated this case with the IRS, says they've recovered $100 million from such bad actors in 2022 alone. One of the tips is to do some of your own detective work. Bad actors are many times lazy and they will look anywhere they can for a photo. Many times you'll find that that image is posted in Instagram, Pinterest or some other uh, social media type service. That was ABC's Whit Johnson reporting. Southwest says its recent service meltdown over the holidays is going to cost the airline at least $725 million and it could hit up to $825 million in a financial filing issued today, the airline said this will cause the company to report a loss in its fourth quarter. Revenue loss alone cost Southwest at least 400 million other costs to include reimbursements, extra employee hours and the goodwill offering of a frequent flyer benefits to travelers. And Peloton has agreed to pay $19 million for failing to report unsafe treadmills and distributing recalled ones. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says it's one of the largest civil penalties in its history. That's largely due to Peloton originally declining to recall its Tread Plus treadmills despite an urgent request. 
The commission says the exercise company started receiving reports about the equipment as early as 2018, but it didn't recall the treadmills until May of 2021. Now following the death of a six year old child and dozens of other injuries. And outside with live ham, look at that. That's a very nice day. Cloudy, nice 71 degrees outside, Justin. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is nice. I went out last night to uh, take the dog out and the moon was so bright. It almost felt like it was daylight mm. outside. We've almost got a full moon now uh, and it will actually be occurring tonight. Five o'clock. That's technically when we have the full moon and you may catch it briefly tonight for the clouds move in. It's the full wolf moon. If you're curious, Skywatcher caught it last night. That's a beautiful shot. Last night it was 99.2% full. Tonight it is full. And if you want to learn more about the wolf moon, Meteorologist Mia Montgomery wrote a great article on our website, KSAD.com. You can check it out and learn more and learn when you can go check it out. Pollen count, if you missed it earlier, I think it's worth repeating. Mountain cedars in the high category, 8,320. It is up from yesterday. So if you're suffering, this could be why we know that uh, cedar season is in full effect now and cedar fever is uh, giving a lot of people fits. Uh, we hope, we hope it comes down a little bit tomorrow, especially if we can get some rain. Molds are low at 460. Looking at your case on 12 hour forecast, we should be close to 75 this afternoon, 72 at 7 p.m. Mostly clear, but those clouds begin to fill in tonight. I'd say as early as midnight, you'll start to see the cloud cover pouring in. And then by tomorrow morning, fog, drizzle and uh, some showers and maybe some thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. More on that forecast in just a bit. All right, a well-known volcano is erupting. This volcano is in Hawaii, known as Kilauea. Uh, the volcano is erupting again. This is a photo of the eruption taken from the U.S. Geological Survey's webcam. Officials say the eruption is currently confined to a large crater and poses no hazard to communities. The USGS notes there is high levels of volcanic gas in the area, which has the potential to create airborne health hazards in people, animals, and plants. And the Spurs held shoot around this morning with Devin Vassell, who needs to have knee surgery, hear from this and his teammates later in sports. Welcome back. A two-legged fox has gone viral after a British woman noticed it on her lawn. As CNN's Jeannie Mose reports, the woman learned that the, <laughs> learned that the fox actually could walk on two legs and it also has a taste for spam. The creature Jane Carter spied through her window in Derbyshire, England, gives new meaning to the term foxtrot. Then he stood up on his front legs and I couldn't believe my eyes. Bring the camera phone quick, she yelled to her husband. There's a two-legged fox on the lawn. It was so fantastic, actually. Upright, like the fantastic Mr. Fox, whose reaction we can only imagine. Wow. The fantastic Mr. Fox also dealt with loss. Tails don't grow back. I'm going to be tailless for the rest of my life. Jane figures the two-legged fox has been that way all of its life because it seemed so well adapted and there were no signs of injury. But it was hungry. I went into the kitchen and opened a tin of spam. 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 <laughs> you don't say ham, you say spam. Jane scattered pieces of Spam out on the lawn. Eventually, the two-legged fox grabbed a chunk of Spam and scrammed. How fast was he? Fast. <laughs> Honestly, it was unbelievable. Online, the two-legged fox became instant legend. And though some might giggle, <laughs> others found it sad. Not Jane. Why isn't it sad? Because he was looking after himself and he looked so healthy. With moves more impressive than the dancing fox in. What does the fox say? <laughs> Weirdest thing I've seen in my life. And how long has your life been? A long. <laughs> long live the two legged fox as long as he lays off the spam. Wish him luck, boys. Ginny Mose, CNN, New York. Taking a look outside with live cam. You know, it's important to know we have a fox here at KSAT. Now I'm wishing it had two legs. It's just <laughs> too cute. It is so cute. That is cute. What does the fox say? <laughs>
We always wonder. All right, outside you see a partly cloudy sky. It's 72 degrees right now. It's uh, turning into a pretty gorgeous day. Uh, that is our high so far. Technically 71. 46, the low at the airport this morning. Records are 84 and 20. It has been as cold as 20 degrees. It was back in 1972. We don't have an even cold in our forecast, but we do have some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms tomorrow. We'll time it out for you, get you set for your weekend and for next week too. Coming up. Welcome back. 72 degrees outside. It's the perfect weather to be outside. Right. A nice run. Nice bike ride. Mm -hmm. So many options, Justin. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. It's the weekend. I think we're, we're ready to get outside and enjoy what is uh, some beautiful weather. I wish I could tell you the weekend is going to be like today. It does change a little bit. We'll get a lot more cloud cover tomorrow. Maybe some showers and uh, drizzle and even a few showers and storms. So let's get right into the forecast. There's the scene right now as we look at the satellite pictures. So we're looking down here on South Texas and we had uh, quite a bit of cloud cover this morning and we typically get these little clouds when the moisture starts to come back in. We get fog and low clouds and that's exactly what transpired this morning. Now as we get into the afternoon, the area of cloud cover is really starting to shrink, starting to break up some and we're getting more and more sun, especially across San Antonio. Bandera, you're still cloudy. Kerrville, still mostly cloudy. Hondo, still mostly cloudy, but those are one of the few remaining places, and you'll see sun this afternoon. These clouds will eventually break apart completely, but we're par uh, partly cloudy here at the airport, and the temperature right now is 71 degrees, two points at 59. Uh, that number has jumped up quite a bit from where it was yesterday, thanks to southerly winds now at 17 miles per hour. Those winds are starting to get a little bit gusty out there, so it will be somewhat of a windy day as we get into the afternoon. 66 in Rock Springs, 71 in Del Rio, already 80 down there in Bevo, and we will see some 80s on the map, seeing that too in Pleasanton. 75 in Gonzales. Around Bear County, lower 70s, where the clouds have held on a little bit longer. It's 67 right now in Holotus. And there's a look at the wind gust. Gusting now to 26 at the airport, gusting to 21 in Rio Medina, close to 30 mile per hour wind gust out of the south in New Braunfels. And that's why that dew point is increasing at such a good rate here. We've got dew points near 60, and that moisture is working its way up through Texas out ahead of a storm system. So dew points are rising up there near Abilene and Dallas and our dew point will only grow probably jumping into the 60s by the time the day is done. And that's when you really start to feel the mugginess outside uh, that sets the stage for a chance for rain too. As we look at the current setup, there's our area of low pressure. There's our cold front. Nothing with it yet. This thing's still taking shape. But as that front moves through Texas, works into some of that moisture, you get the lift that you need. And then hopefully we get some showers and storms around here. Again, the timing's not ideal. I know it's the weekend. We got things to do. We don't want a lot of rain, but we need rain so badly here uh, that we'll take what we can get at this point. 74 degrees at 3 o'clock, 75 at 4 p.m., 75 at 5 p.m., 72 at 7 o'clock. I'd say by midnight, you'll start to see the clouds really starting to thicken up. And then we start to add in some drizzle chances, uh, that light drizzly stuff that may not necessarily show up on radar, but it will be there. The clouds expand quickly tomorrow morning. This is 7 o'clock, fog and drizzle. A good bet tomorrow morning, and that probably goes through about midday. And then the clouds may try to break up a little bit in the afternoon, but we'll start to get that front coming in. This is 7 o'clock. Shows about a 30% chance of some showers and maybe a rumble of thunder here. And as the front works its way through the area, this is midnight. Now, I think this model overdoes a little bit, but it does show a chance for some thunderstorms, maybe some heavy thunderstorms in spots. If you were to get underneath one of these downpours, it's conceivable you could pick up some decent rain, but uh, it's going to be hit or miss, and I'd say it's generally east of San Antonio where that may happen. We're not looking for severe weather, by the way, so that's the good news here. And then by 3 a.m., starting to push south, you're starting to see the rain push south, and this is what we're thinking as far as rainfall estimates. The, the biggest totals will be out towards Houston, close up to an inch there, but our eastern counties, that's say anywhere from a tenth of an inch to a half an inch, but if you do happen to get underneath a heavier storm, then you could see a little bit more than that. And hopefully we add some rain into the rain bucket because we do do need it. Uh, 74 degrees coming up tomorrow, a chance of some drizzle in the morning and then a 30% chance of a shower or storm as that front comes through. Some clearing on Sunday after a shower too early, 67, 68 Monday, chance of a sprinkle with quite a bit of cloud cover, but it does clear out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and temperatures are right back there into the 70s with some pretty comfortable weather. We'll be right back.
Spurs will host the Pistons tonight, looking to break a three-game losing streak. Shooting guard Devin Vassell, who is going to have an arthroscopic procedure on his left knee next week, will not be suiting up for the Spurs anytime soon. Here's Jakob from Morning Shoot Around. I mean, it's tough. He's one of our best players, one of our our uh, main motors on offense. Uh, so it's going to be tough making up for that. Um, but we got a lot of um, guys behind them that are hungry for the opportunity. And um, I'm sure they'll step up. I mean, Romy has done it a number of times when he's been out these last couple of weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I'm expecting everybody else to pick up the slack. Spurs and Pistons will play ball tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Members of the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals are starting to smile now because Bills safety DeMar Hamlin continues to improve. The Bills tweeted that DeMar's breathing tube was removed overnight. He continues to progress remarkably in his recovery. His neurologic function remains intact, and he's been able to talk to his family and care team. Hamlin FaceTimed his team today and said, love you boys, and he was able to show off during that FaceTime chat with his guys. The thing that <laughs> makes me laugh is, is he did this to the guys, you know, right away. And, um, he flexed, he flexed, uh, he flexed on them, I guess. And, uh, um, he's just got some staple things that they know him for and that he does. I and mean, he made the heart, the heart symbol probably more than anything. Um, and then he gave him a thumbs up. So the bills tweeted they will be wearing a special number three patch on Sunday for their guide Demar Hamlin when they host the New England Patriots. Wednesday afternoon, we caught up with Baylor libero Lauren Brasenio while she was working out at SA Force. Lauren graduated from Cornerstone Christian High School and went to Baylor as a walk on. Back in late November, while watching the NCAA volleyball tournament selection show at Coach McGuire's house, she got the surprise of her college career during a white elephant gift exchange when her head coach awarded her with a full scholarship. How awesome is that? Yeah, I think it definitely proves that, you know, hard work does pay off and just um, loving the game so much that even like going to Baylor, like I knew like what I was getting myself into, but I was like, you know, it's scholarship, no scholarship. Like I love this game and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to travel anywhere, just anywhere away from my home in order to play the game that I love. But also just after getting the scholarship, not allowing um, scholarship, no scholarship, letting it define who I am as a player and just um, continuing to love the game as it is. Lauren cried tears of joy while surrounded by her teammates who were all in on the full scholarship surprise. Yes, I think that was one of the main things that like kind of like caught me by surprise because I'm best friends with a lot of my teammates and just the fact that they kept that away from me, I think I think is what made it like even more special because I know some of them kind of like uh, like let things slip a little or anything like that. So I think that's definitely something that made it a lot more special. Lauren is 19, entering her junior season at Baylor with two years of eligibility left. Miles says it all. Right. She's awesome. Her family is awesome. So congratulations. A to her. big Major. congratulations. Congratulations. Wishing her the best. And uh, Tiffany, it's 1254. I think it's time we check in or head on over to Market Square. Check in with Mike and Fiona. See what's going on. Oh, what? absolutely. It's going to be a fun Friday. In fact, the KSAT Insider Prize Wheel is back and there are huge prizes Big up for grabs prizes. and they could be yours. Yes, indeed. And speaking of prizes, our dear friend Mary Lou Davis, chef, is here in, back in town and a very special event coming up. And you're making a pasta dish, right? Yes, sir, I am. Secret to making pasta. Save your pasta water. It is liquid gold and this? using it Absolutely, it doesn't look like much, but the best thing more like that, it's like a secret. So it's gonna help thicken up your sauces. Okay. To give it more body. And we are gonna be tasting this dish. <laughs> it looks absolutely delicious. Okay, got two words for you. Uh-huh. Voodoo, Voodoo donuts. donuts. Yes, Yes, indeed. one of the newest donut places in town. And Felice Ellis is here. Uh, you brought some donuts with you, just a few yeah, of them, Yeah, right? just a few, just 13 of our most popular. This is our Voodoo Dozen here. And you said you have the greatest donut in the country voted on, right? We do. It's here today. It's in that it's mix? It's in that mix. Hmm. Oh, we're going to tell you what that is. And then you're going to be heading out to SeaWorld, mm -hmm. right? Coming up on SA Live, it's a new experience you can have at SeaWorld. A behind the scenes, inside look with some of the animals. Oh yes, where you can get some snacks and drinks to help you unwind and enjoy the first Friday of the year and tell you where you can get this incredible drink container. Souvenir cup. <laughs> <laughs> A whole lot more on SA Live.